Okay, you nine. We're going to be looking at portraiture in today's smartphone photography lesson. So I want to start off by saying a massive well done to everyone who's contributed work to the photography project so far. It's been amazing seeing your photography develop and I can't wait to see where we all take it. So as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at portraiture in today's lesson. Portraiture is such a huge genre of photography, so I've decided to narrow this down into how to capture emotion and character within our portraits. And we're going to do this by analysing the works of David Bailey and Lee Jeffries in today's lesson. After this analysing of their work, we're then going to practice those techniques for ourselves and create our own portraits. We're then going to choose a final two images and edit those techniques to enhance them using Photopea. We're going to start off by having a think about how many different styles of portraiture there are. So I've just grabbed some examples of portrait photography from the internet so we can have a look at the different styles that there are. So first off, we've got candid photography. This is a nice natural style of photography that captures our subjects when they're not expecting it, when they just act in natural. So that's really quite nice style that we can include in today's lesson. You can also have creative sort of portraits. That's a, something that thinks outside of the box. And it's not just a straightforward image. The photographer takes a different approach and creates a creative outlook. Then you've got studio photography, which the photographer uses studio lighting. You can see here that the photographer has used gels to create a colored lighting effect. This can only really be um, achieved within the studio unless you come up with alternative materials. And then lastly, we've got fashion and booty portraits. So these are highly stylized, posed uh, to get that fashion-y sort of result. Obviously, this is only a few examples. There are so many different styles of portraiture. And we're going to be looking at a few different photographers today to help inspire our own portraits. I'm going to give you a quick 30 seconds and just think as of as many examples as you can. So we're going to be looking at David Bailey first. And he's one of the greats when it comes to photographing portraits. He's a British photographer and his work focuses on fashion and celebrities. So he's been around for decades. He actually came to stardom when he photographed a lot of famous people in the 60s. He actually created some of the most iconic images from the decade. His work is a very recognisable style. He usually has stark backgrounds, which means quite plain. And he also has dramatic studio lighting. He still works in London. Um, he has a, a studio based in London and he's still photographing A-list celebrities to this day. And his work is well known for capturing personalities within portraits. So they're not just a straightforward portrait. He actually manages to capture their personalities within the photo. So let's have a look at some examples of his work next. As you can see, he's photographed so many different famous people, including the Queen, believe it or not. I just want you to have a quick look at these images and I want you to write down some of the key features that makes his style of work.
So I hope you were able to take a really close look at his works there and really unpick those key features that identify his style. So here are some things you could have noted down. He uses plain backgrounds, that's quite clear in the images I've shown you. So whether they are white or black or grey backgrounds, but the attention is always drawn onto the subject themselves. So there's no distractions elsewhere. You could have noticed that they are usually shot in a studio setting. So he quite often uses studio lighting. And this lighting is used to create qu quite a dramatic effect. He uses really bright lights in his work and that brings out the highlights really brightly, but it also creates dramatic shadows within the portraits as well. And it's this contrast that creates a really dramatic final image. You could have said that his work is shot close up, so it's quite often only including the head and the shoulders of his subjects. Again, this really draws in the attention to the subject and avoids all the distractions around him. You've only got the face to focus on. A really obvious one is they're all black and white. So again, maybe this removes attention away from other areas where you're only capturing the features and the personality within the image. You could have also noticed that these portraits are full of emotion and personality. And that's something I really want us to implement in our lesson today. So how does he capture emotion and personality? Well, his image is really quite natural. So they're not posed and staged. David creates an environment where his subjects are feeling natural and relaxed within the studio. And this brings out a natural portrait where he gets to know his subject. So the images he creates are natural. And this comes through in his, in his work. And la the last point I've got there, you might not have put on your list, but it's a feeling that the images he shares with us have a feeling of being the superior final image. And the reason for this is that unlike other photographers who create contact pages and lots of images to choose from, David Bailey actually only gives his clients one final image. He has full control over the images people see and don't see. So whereas other photographers will give their client lots of choice, David Bailey doesn't. He might spend 45 minutes in the studio with them and they'll only get one image. And I think this does come through in his final works because there is only one and that one is the star image. So be confident in your choices today. Whatever images you choose, make sure it's your decision and you're choosing them because it's the best one. Our second photographer is Lee Jeffries. Now, unlike David Bailey, he's not a pioneering photographer. He's just an accountant from Manchester. But that's not undermining his work. He has actually inspired so many people with his photography. So he just photographs in his free time and he specialises on portrait photography. And his subjects are usually homeless people from all over the world. He's actually, through his photography, he's now on a mission to raise funds and awareness around the issue of homelessness. So his style of work, he, he classes himself as a spiritual photographer. And this makes him create haunting portraits. And he does this by making connections with his subjects, which you're about to see in a video I'm going to show you next. It's important to remember that his photographs are to honour his subjects and not to pity them. So you'll be able to see this throughout his work. Just um, have a quick look at this video so you can get to understand his process a bit better. I was in London to run the marathon and I decided to have a go at street photography. So I, 
I took my camera out with a big 200 millimeter lens uh, in the streets of London and saw a young homeless girl across the street. I started to shoot frames of this girl and uh, she noticed me and she did not like at all what I was doing. She started to shout from across the street and all the, the, the passers-by were looking at me uh, and it was really quite an embarrassing situation. Every part of me was thinking, just get out of here Lee, we, you just need to you know, get out of the situation. But I didn't. I stopped, I walked over to her and I sat down with her and spent a few hours just, just talking and just listening to what she had to say. Uh, that was the first time in my life, I guess, I've been completely selfless. And, you know, for, for 30 years of my life, I, it was all about me. Hearing that individual story, it was listening to somebody else, you know, somebody else's pain, somebody else's uh, torment, loneliness, made me suddenly realize that you know the, the, there's more to the world than me and I think it, it just ignited uh, a compassion we, we can't all individually wave a magic wand and take people out of homeless homelessness but what I can do is help the mission and help on a on a more macro level My hope, I guess, is that the power of what I produce and the, the degree of spirituality and, 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 and faith and, and, and everything that's good about my images is enough to influence the people that see them. Great guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. It's always good to see the photographer in action, so I wanted to include that to show you his process. So here's some of the results of his work. Uh, it's exactly the same again. I'm going to give you 30 seconds, and I want you to write down the key features that make Lee Jeffrey's work stand out. And so you could say that Lee Jeffries is the total opposite scale compared to David Bailey. You've got David Bailey who's rubbing shoulders with the rich and famous photographing A-listers and celebrities and even royals. And then you've got Lee Jeffries who goes out on the streets and finds his subjects and they are homeless. And it's just completely opposite ways of working. But that's no need to say that Lee Jeffrey's work is any less successful. He's got such a unique and interesting way of working. So, so we're going to have a look at some of those key features now and how we can include these in our works today as well. So first up, I've said that one of the key features in Lee Jeffrey's work is that he shoots in macro. And all macro means is a really super close up. And you can either achieve this with a special lens if you were shooting on a DSLR. You might even have a feature or setting on your smartphone camera. Brilliant if you do. If you don't, don't worry. Just move closer to your subject and that can like replicate the style. Then I've said that Lee Jeffrey's work is hyper sharp detailed. And in contrast to David Bailey, Whereas David Bailey achieves this high contrast in studio through his lighting, Lee Jeffries, although he adds flash sometimes in his photography, I think there is an extra stage where he heightens or enhances this 
high contrast, super sharp detail within his editing techniques at a later stage. So we're going to be taking a look at that later on in the lesson as well. Now, all of Lee Jeffrey's work on a more emotional side compared to the technical side is really intimate and personal. And I think he achieves this by walking the streets, getting to know his subjects first, and then that does come out in his photography. So it's just as much important about the technical decisions as the actual thought process behind the photography as well, because all these elements do come out. You could say that because of this, his, art, his photographs are heartbreaking, um, which is a word which is used to describe his work. But as he does mention, his photography is meant to be celebrating these people's lives, not to pity them. So it's really important to remember when we are reflecting and analysing his work. And one of my most favourite things about Lee Jeffrey's style is the particular attention he pays to the subject's eyes. Now, if you look throughout his photography, he really pays close attention to the eyes. And it is said within the world of photography that the eyes are the windows to the soul. So when you've got this process of the subject looking directly into the camera and the camera looking directly into the eyes, it creates this connection between the viewer, the subject, the photographer, it makes it all connected and that's really powerful. So experiment with that in your photo task today if you can. And like David Bailey, he does uh, shoot mostly in black and white, but he does also include some low saturation photos. This creates a really moody, dramatic sort of image as well. So maybe that's an editing style you would like to include in your experimental photo editing later in the lesson. So I hope you found it really helpful to analyse those two artists' work and sort of compare them as well, because our notes and reflections and analysing notes from their work are really going to help us develop our own personal photos in today's lessons. So if you need to go back and revisit those slides, take a closer look at their photos which they have produced. Really consider the techniques and the key features and the styles of both the photographers. Really try to implement those within your uh, photos today as well. So let's break down this task a bit further. First off, we're going to create a set of portraits. Now, I know all of our situations are different, so I'm going to give you an option here. You can either do self-portraits and photograph yourself, or you can photograph someone you live with. It might be easier to photograph someone you, have li you live with because you're going to have complete control over the camera and you are just focused on the decisions you make. If you do photograph someone else, make sure you are in control, you are telling them what, exactly what you want them to do. But don't worry if you're just taking photos of yourself because then you're in control of both aspects. So either one is going to work great for this task. So next, I want us to take influence from David Bailey and Lee Jeffries in today's lesson. So experiment with those different techniques and styles of both photographers. Consider different camera angles which you can use. Remember everything we've done in the previous lessons as well. Lighting, compositions, they're all going to help you in today's lesson. And a new thing to consider on top of everything we've already done is facial expressions, pauses. Remember, we've got an actual live subject to photograph today. So it just brings in a new layer to the photography, a new thing which you've got to control and which you have power over. So really make sure you are making the decisions to get the outcome that you want from this task. Then, once we have got our photos, I want us to create two final images. And within those images, I really want us to focus on personality and character and emotion as well. And we're going to really enhance these two things by editing our two final images and really implementing those styles of the two photographers. So one photo to show the style of David Bailey and one photo to show the style of Lee Jeffries. So it's quite a bit to fit in, but I'm going to break it down stage by stage and it's going to be great. 
So first off, I've used myself to take photos of, just because I didn't have anyone I lived with who could. I know it can be daunting to step in front of a camera, but I just want to reassure you these images will just be seen by myself and Mr. Husband. So you've got nothing to worry about. I know it's daunting, but try to get past that because you're going to learn a lot from today's lesson if you throw yourself into this task. So don't be scared of the camera, please, guys. So I'm going to share with you the two styles of photos that I've taken. The first set are quite positive, happy images. And ways I've created this are through smiling, nice bright exposures, and you can experiment with looking directly into camera or looking just off the camera. Also have a play about with the camera angle. Usually shot from a bit further away, a bit higher up, will have quite a nice natural effect or maybe from eye level could work. So these images were trying to capture a character within the shot, much like David Bailey. And then the second set of images I've taken, I was going for a more moody, dramatic feel, a bit like uh, Je Ugh, Lee Jeffries, sorry. So you can see that I've created these by doing a more serious expression. I've included hand gestures that could represent emotion as well. I've kept my backgrounds plain and also darker in these sets of images. I've also realised the shooting from down low and keeping the camera angle low will create a more dominating and powerful feeling within the portrait. So have a play about with these uh, techniques yourself, guys. You're going to create lots of different moods and feelings within your photos. And I want to see you experimenting with these. So try using natural light if you can. So step by a window. If you haven't got a nice bright window, you can even try using some artificial light. Try using a lamp, see what effect that will give you. And some top tips for this task. You could try setting your self-timer and balancing your phone somewhere. This hands-free effect will give it more, less of a selfie feel to it then, which is good for this because we don't want a selfie. We want a self-portrait. So we want a professional looking image, okay? Um, and you can also just, like I said, don't be over critical. Don't look your image and just criticize yourself. That's not what this task is about. We are looking at the professional techniques that a photographer would use. So no using filters either, please. So once you've got your set of images, I want you to pick two final images. One that could be inspired by David Bailey and one by Lee Jeffries. And then we're going to take them into Photopea one at a time. And I want us to edit them in the style of these photographers. So let's start off by uploading the image into Photopea. And then we're going to create a black and white filter. Oops, not that. Go back. And what choosing black and white filter this way means is that you can control all the tones within the black and white. So as you can see here, I've been changing the red and the yellow and you should have a play about with these. The red and the yellow will focus on the highlights within the images and the skin tones. And the other colours will focus on other areas. But it's mostly the skin tones we are interested in for this task. So have a play about with them. You don't want to lose too much detail. So don't go too far either end. So this is the David Bailey one I'm editing now. So I want to keep it nice and bright. So... I've also added a brightness and contrast layer there. So I've made it a little bit bright and a lot of contrast. You can zoom up by holding down command and scrolling. And I'll zoom up into the image. Don't go too far because you'll see my wrinkles. <laughs> and then you can use the dodge tool. So I've selected shadows because the pupil part of my eye is very shadowy. You can play about with the brush size 
are the range, which is mid-tones, highlights and shadows, and the exposure. So I want you to have a little bit of an experiment with those three things while editing your eyes, because it's going to help bring the eyes out of the image. So have a little play about and see what difference they make. Mm. And then you can also, if, if you go a bit too far with the dodge tool, you can go into the burn tool. And that's going to make everything darker. So again, have a play about. I've gone for mid-tones here and the exposure of 30%. So the higher the exposure, the more impact that this brush is going to have. If I didn't want it to have too much impact, I would just bring the exposure all the way down to like three percent but that's yours to experiment with and have a little play about with that so final touches i've selected the background layer which is my photo and then command l to activate the layers window and i've just re, re sharpened ah uh, oh, sorry done the levels to make it a little bit brighter in the brighter areas and a bit more shadowy in the shadowy areas. Okay, so then we're going to open up a second image in Photopea and this is going to be the Lee Jeffries image. So this is the image I've chosen and exactly the same as David Bailey have gone in to create that new layer of black and white. Now remember Lee Jeffries style is a lot darker and more haunting so what i've done is i brought those skin tones further down for this one because we want a more moody effect so yeah have a play about with all those and it's, it's going to be different for everyone's different images so you can press those buttons there to see what it's like with and without that layer the good thing about working on layers is that you can always go back and edit them later and that's going to be really important. If you change your mind about anything, you can go back and change them, which is really neat. So then I've added a curves layer and the curves brings out all the light in the image. So again, I want to go for a really contrasty, dark, moody effect on this one. So if you drag the line down, it's more shadowy and if you pull it up it brings out the highlights so you can experiment with that again the zoom keys are command and scroll and i'm doing the exact same thing with my eyes but i'm going to do it a bit more dramatic on this one because if you remember lee jeffries is known for his really eye capturing images and he really highlights those eyes so i'm going to do the same or i'll try to do the same on my self-portrait so i want quite a hard brush for this because i want to only focus on the eyes and keep that quite detailed i don't want it leaking into the skin tones i'm also going for mid tones and then i'm using a 24 percent exposure and what you can do is play about with that oh i realize actually that's a bit too bright maybe so what you can do is just undo that and go to the just change the brushes you've got complete control in the history window on the right hand side you can just simply undo something when you are editing your eyes i don't want you to overdo it because it's just going to look unnatural so it's a fine balance between looking really eye-catching and effective and just looking a bit naff so zoom out zoom in because it look different when you're closer in and further away have a play about there. This is yours to experiment with. Like I said, you can always go back into those layers and edit them as you see fit, which is a really good option to have. Okay, so now we're going to have a play about with the burn tool. Always make sure you've got your background selected when you're editing onto the background. Now, the burn tool is just going to make things darker. So a nice, not hard brush, so a soft brush. And I'm just making the outsides darker. And this is to just represent Lee Jeffries' effect of depth within his images. I want to keep the focus on the face, you see. 
and then Lee Jeffrey's uh, style is really sharp so going to unsharp mask and this filter is going to give us that grainy really sharp effect that we are looking for have a play about with those levels there because that might be different for your image and then just save as a jpeg when you were happy so here you have them my two final images and you can see here on the left this one is my image inspired by david bailey so some of the key features i try to include in this shooting and editing process are nice and bright exposure and editing techniques i've also tried to keep the poses natural but including lots of character as well so that's i, I I've, I've controlled both these features by shooting close to the window and that is my curtain which is over my face and head but i think it creates a nice natural feel similar to that of david bailey so have fun and experiment like there are no rules there show personality and character within that particular photo and then when you compare it to the other image automatically you can see it's quite dark and moody and dramatic and i've done this by stepping away from my camera and shooting up towards my face so that background there is just my ceiling but because the light is directed onto my face and not the ceiling behind me it's this sort of really vignetted effect where the background's completely gone so i really like that that can be compared to lee jeffrey's style so i thought that was really successful in that way i've also included a hand gesture in there and also paid attention to the eyes as well and again editing styles i've tried to really create that sharp gritty and moody and dramatic sort of feel within the editing uh, techniques there as well so overall i'm happy with the final images so try to in include these features in your works i want it to be clear which image is representing which photographer so like i said go back in the lesson and remind yourselves of those key features from both photographers so let's recap on today's photo task step one shoot a selection of portraits that show experiments of different techniques now remember i am looking for a professional style it's got to be well thought out and I want thought-provoking portraits. So everything that I've mentioned in the lesson so far, implement these in your shooting styles. I'd like to see a photo or screen grab of the photos which you were taking to show your experiment in, as well as your two final photos, please. Our second step, we are going to use Photopia to edit those two final images in the style of both David Bailey and Lee Jeffries. And then lastly, as ever, I want those reflective annotated notes. Please don't forget them. I want you to write down your shooting and editing processes. So all those factors we got to remember, write them down, show to the examiner and to me that you know what you're doing and you're making the decisions purposefully. I want you to talk about the moods and emotions captured within your images and include information on the influence from the photographers as well. So really detailed annotated notes. Please don't forget them. They are just as important as the photos. So I want us to highlight the key things which are going to make our work really successful today. So remember all these bullet points throughout today's tasks and it's going to make you work just a little bit better, I promise. So while you're shooting, remember to experiment with different camera angles and also consider the effect that it has on the final image. Also the same with lighting, background and composition. All these decisions are going to impact on the final image. Try to include pauses and hand gestures within your images and experiment with how different styles of these creates different final outcomes of the photo as well. 
and eye placement. I want you to experiment with the eye looking away from the camera, looking to the camera, looking down. All these are going to have a really different impact on the photo. So I want you to experiment and see what works best. Remember, each of the different styles are going to make your photo say something different. So it's worth trying them out and seeing what works best for what you want to try to say within your final photo. And then while you're editing, remember black and white, high contrast, and experiment with those dodge and burn tools. And show me that you have considered all these within your annotated notes. I want you to write about how you felt about using them. Was it easy? Was it hard? Let me know. Put those in your notes. So to make the hand in process a bit easier for you this week, I've created a Word document which I'd like you to use to drop your work into the Word document and then just hand in one file, the Word document, to me. You can use this as a sort of checklist to make sure you remember everything I need from today's lesson. So first off, I am looking for a screenshot of your experimental photos. So you can do this by going into your gallery on your cam phone and just taking a screenshot on your phone and dropping that into the Word document for me. This is just going to show that you really have experimented with all those different elements of photography that I've asked you to include. Number two, I'd like you to include those two final edited images. So remember to represent the styles of the two different photographers. Number three, annotated notes. And I want annotated notes for both photos. So make sure it's clear which uh, photo you were annotating at the time. And then lastly, I've got a bit of reflections on the lesson. So it's always good to reflect on our work and to make games for the next lesson as well. And if you've done all that and you've got time after the lesson, try doing an artist research page of those two foot or just one or two of the photographers. They're really iconic photographers for us to be looking at and they'll be really impactful in our sketchbooks. So there's loads of information out there on the website um, of the uh, works so go ahead and do your own research include the information from today's lesson get some more get reflective on the works it's going to really build up a really strong body of work for your sketchbook so have fun doing your portraits and if you've got any questions about shooting or editing i'm around all day on friday so just drop me a message if you need any extra guidance as well enjoy the lesson guys